Hello everyone! It's been a while since I have done a Photoshop tutorial. I'm aiming to do a super cool tutorial very soon where you'll see the whole process of making a festival poster. That's one of my future's idea. Let me know if you'd be interested. But for now, we are going to talk about smart objects. So first, let's create a new document. Just by habit, I will work with A3 because this is what I like to work with and I always use a 300 dpi as well for those who are curious about that. So what is a smart object? Let me show you. Basically when you drag and drop something on your canvas it has like this little grayish like paper sheet thing and this is a smart object. You can either raterize your layer, so it's not a smart object anymore, it's pixels, or you can convert it to a smart object. So let's go back. So what is the difference between a smart object and a regular image? So I have duplicated my layer. Okay, let me show you again. I have duplicated my layer by pressing option and lifting this layer to the top. So let's name our layers logo and logo smart object. Right, so let's rasterize this one and then let's place them in different, in different place, I guess. <laughs> Okay, the first main goal of your smart object is to keep the quality of your image perfect. It kind of remember where the object is from in your computer and rather the, like whether you uh, scale it up, scale it down, you can always keep this good quality of it. While in a rasterize object, you cannot, you will destroy it more and more if you like scale it down. So let me demonstrate that. Let's put this very small like this. Press enter to uh, validate. Validate, is that even a word? Sorry guys. And let's do the same with this one. Okay, so we have two very small image. And now let's see what happened if I scale up again this one. As you can see, basically nothing changed. And oops. and what happened if we do it with this one? Can you see how annoying this is? This is pixels and we definitely lose the quality. It's not too bad at the moment, um, but the more you manipulate the image, the worse it's gonna be. So that's the first main advantage of a smart object. Now, let me go into details. So smart objects have tons of possibilities. For instance, it's really, really good to make advanced mockups. Like let's say, let's completely pretend, okay? Let's say uh, this is my background and this is like uh, the image I need for my mockup. If you double click on the image of your layer, not the text, the image, it will bring you to your actual file, the file that you dropped uh, on Photoshop. So here we have the original image and I'm just gonna paste something I had in mind which is part of one of my design uh, from my everyday challenge and now I can get rid of this and just save that and then the magic happens right there isn't that amazing so that is the first uh, not the first actually the second interest of a smart object is that you can play around and have like your image perfectly placed, for example, a frame or a poster or an ad on a wall um, with 
uh, your textures and everything and you can just double click here and you can add any image here to just swap as you will uh, so that's really really convenient and then another thing amazing about smart object which is actually my favorite thing about smart object is how it's creating an historical historical is that how it's called oh my god how oh, it's called oh this is it history it's called it's creating kind of a history of uh, all of the effect you're gonna apply to your smart object so for example let's say liquify because liquify is something i often use and the thing is when you liquify and you are kind of sure but not so sure and then you do it you move forward in your project and like i don't know 20 steps later you're like oh no i'm not that much into the liquefying thing and i shouldn't have done it and then you're just stuck or you're just gonna lose everything you've done in between uh, which is really annoying the smart object will save you this trouble let me show you so let's liquefy this us oh my god oh my god <laughs> okay youtube don't come for me this is just okay you know what let's go for something a bit more abstract so i don't get demonetized <laughs> okay so this is funnier um so let's say i'm really into this the circle was nice though um so i have the liquify thing here and let's say i want a blur as well gushing gushing blur Gosh, blur, please. Thank you very much. A bit more. Okay, that's cool. And as you can see, uh, all the effects I have done are here. They are listed. I can. They're just like sub layers, basically. So I can uncheck them to see how it would be without the liquify, or see how it would be with the gosh and blur. Yes, and. A thing even better for example if you want to delete some of them you will just like um, double click or like left click on it and just put disable or delete I'm just gonna delete this the Gaussian blur to show you something so I love to work with noise um, like this this is really intense but yeah let's go for it I love to work with noise. Noise is here as well. And sometimes I'm like, oh, I've put in noise, but I forgot to blur and I would really like this design to be blurred. So I will blur it. And then what happened is the noise disappear and that's a shame. And it is not actually because I, I was using a smart object and what I can do is just take this noise and put it over the Gaussian blur. And ta-da, the noise is on top. So it's just so useful, honestly. So when you, okay, let me show you that again. Um, one downside of the smart object is that it's a lot to process for your computer. And it's my, it might get your fan a bit crazy. Your computer might heat up a bit as well. And your file size will definitely scale up as well and be more heavy um, so to help itself photoshop when you like come and tee your object and you want to manipulate it it will go back to its original form just to process this um, much quicker when you're happy you press enter and and that's pretty hard for him, but here you go. Now that you have all of those uh, modification going on, let's put the background back. Let's add some noise as well. Just so it kind of feel like connected somehow. And guys, this is not a design in any way. It's just uh, some random experiment, right? Um, but it could end up being a design. I mean, like this part is quite cool. But moving on, um, so now that you have your effect that you like and the placement, for instance, you can say, oh, that image looks cool, but I would love to know what it would like look like with another one. And 
you can just do that by double clicking here and adding your image paste your new uh, image and get rid of the previous one and then you can save and the magic happens uh, okay that's pretty ugly but you didn't have to redo all the work like with the same image like with with another image my bad you did like the exact same settings uh, and effect and you can just try um, without spending all the time redoing all of those um, let's take up the liquidifier for instance and another amazing thing about smart object is that if you double click on each of them you can re-edit them at their stage and that's super convenient for the liquify because you can actually go back to where you were or like experiment a lot um, without like deleting it actually completely and work with it yay oh the love those colors oh my god well the, the blur is awful anyway that's really just an idea and again if i want to scale this super small and then super big oh that's cute that is cute very small super cute actually like a drop something mm. and scale it super big and it will still be a good quality anyway uh, maybe there is a bit too much noise so again you can just double click on the noise and you'll have the panel where you were and you can just calm it down a bit also this is not as fancy as it should be because I have liquefied um, an image that, w that already had noise and grain on it so it kind of distorted the noise and I don't really like the results but that's okay so I think that was it guys um, I don't think you need to knew, know anything more about, about smart object just careful with the size of your files obviously because this is gonna be heavy just to show you well this one won't be too heavy I guess but let's see if you want to save and check the size of your file before you save it you can go on export and save for web and then here okay that's super heavy for a JPEG this is super heavy like 15 megabytes is huge like enormous uh, so what I do usually is I go for 50% uh, but it's still going to be super huge, actually. Yeah, 2 mega. Um, so that's up to you guys. Also, I'm working in A3 and 300 DPI, so I don't know what I'm expecting. Of course, it's going to be heavy. Um, careful with your file size and the planet, because storage is one of the most polluting uh, industry out there as well. Uh, that was just a very quick sustainable message. <laughs> Take care. I really hoped it was useful and I'll see you around soon for another tutorial. Bye-bye. As usual, guys, thank you so much for watching and please, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like, a comment and uh, more importantly, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss on any new tutorials.